So, you died in Realm of the Mad God. It happens to everyone, of course. Sometimes you'll just be playing and then you'll make a stupid mistake, or maybe the game will make a stupid mistake for you. But you lose your character, you lose your items. Sometimes it's just a bad character and you don't feel too bad about it, but if it's a big character, you will be very sad. And you might be encouraged to continue playing and lose more characters. I wouldn't recommend that. There are other things you can do instead of playing, or things you can do while playing to avoid falling into the hole of dying repeatedly over and over again and losing all your items, which is not fun. I wouldn't recommend it. So of course, the first and most obvious thing you can do if when you die in Realm of the Mad God to avoid losing your items is to just stop playing for a bit, play a different game maybe, maybe go outside, you know, touch some grass, or you could watch a YouTube video perhaps. There's, there's a couple good videos out there, I'm not gonna name any of course. I'd recommend some more relaxing games maybe, so that you can calm down if you kind of get angry when you die. Of course not everyone's gonna get angry when they die. Some people won't care and will be fine even if they lose a big character. Another thing you can do while in, while in the game, this is not outside of the game, something you can do in the game is to just farm some lowlands dungeons. This may seem pointless and ridiculous, but it's kind of nice, it's kind of relaxing, you're still playing, you're not going to risk losing any characters in a lowlands dungeon, because it's just the lowlands, there's nothing really threatening there. But also, most of the lowlands dungeons, everything except the hive, has its own pet skin. There's a, there's a slurp in the pirate cave, there's a tree in the forest maze, there's a mini basilisk in the forbidden jungle, and there's an eggshell spider in the spider den. All of those pet skins are going to be worth 28 crystals of fortune if you're getting them as a duplicate. And if you're getting them for the first time, then it's a new pet skin, which you can never say no to a new pet skin. Plus, if you have it unlocked and you get it a second time, that's 28 crystals of fortune, which can be used as pet food. Or you can store them and keep them until you're able to afford a mystery skin. Or sometimes one of the familiar skins, which are in the familiar skin collections. If you're feeling a little braver or maybe a little calmer, you can also move up to the Islands or Mountains level dungeons. These will give you stat potions in addition to a chance at some untiered items and pet skins. Stat potions will help you max a new character to replace the one that you died on. Obviously that won't give you the items, but you'll get UT items, untiered items to forge the items you may have lost unless they're legendary tier items, in which you're not going to be able to get those back from Mountains dungeons. Unless there's an event like the current Vindication event where you're actually able to exchange for legendary tier items with the encrypted notes which do drop from Mountain's Dungeons. Mountain's Dungeons, most of them also have a skin or a pet skin to get. I know Abyss of Demons has the Demon Frog which is worth 28 Crystals of Fortune and the Horned Worm which is also worth 28 Crystals of Fortune. The Cursed Library has the Cultured Bookworm which is only worth 14 Crystals of Fortune. Undead Lair has the Possessed Staff, which is 28. It's Toxic Sewer has the Slurp Knight, which is 14. You can get lots of Crystals of Fortune just from farming Godland Dungeons. I personally, I'd recommend Abyss, although Abyss is quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or you're being careless. So it might be better to go to something like Snake Pit, which also has two pet skins. There's a Bat Mini Basilisk and a Mini Stheno Assassin skin. I've never actually gotten the mini Stheno Assassin, it's relatively rare. Ancient Ruins even has one skin, Sand Wanderer Trickster, which I want to say is actually superior, meaning it's going to be worth 36 Crystals of Fortune, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, it's not 36, it's 42, which is a lot. That's two-thirds of a mystery skin, also two full stacks, which are very high beat power. Of course, there is a risk of dying in Godland Dungeons, unlike Midlands or Lowlands, so you got to worry about that. If you, you're feeling even more brave, you could even move on to Realm Encounters, which arguably are less dangerous than Godlands or Mountains Dungeons, since there's going to be a lot of people at Realm Encounters. They're not going to drop as many potions, which are kind of got a lot of fame from Realm Encounters. Plus, Encounter Whites are Legendary Forge, most of them. Everything except Ray Katana will be Legendary Forge, Grade S items. Eventually, you'll be ready to go back into Encounter Dungeons and Exaltation Dungeons and everything. Unless you were ready from the start and just kind of scared. However, coping with the death is not the only thing you can do when you die. You can also learn from your death. If you died in some stupid way, then you can learn from it. If you say, we're at the nest encounter, for an example, 
and you looked away from your screen for a moment and the, the red beast sat on you and killed you, you can maybe think, I should not do that. I should not look away from my screen while there's a red bee like three tiles away from me. That's not a good idea. That thing has an insta-kill shotgun and tries to sit on you. Maybe you died in the interregnum. You got took hit by too many shots. You didn't drink enough healing potions during the last phase. Or maybe you got sat on by the, the running away cowards. That one's particularly dangerous. Or you're running a fungal cavern and you are very cocky when soloing the crystal worm mother and it sits on you and quiets you and you can't slow it because they got sat on. Obviously, none of these things have happened to me. I've not died recently, not even in the past week. I've not died three times and those were not my three deaths that I died. Of course, if you've learned from your death, you can know, try not to do that in the future. Maybe you keep falling into the same lap, the same loop, but you'll die to the similar things constantly. Obviously, it is a learning process. It's part of the permadeath mechanics of the game. They're never going to get removed. It's the core feature of the game, permadeath. If you are rich and have a lot of character slots and potions stored up from not dying, I do a lot of realm clearing, so I get lots of extra potions that I store away and then potion fuge into my gift chest where they don't take up space. I can then put all those onto a new character as soon as I die, as well as get some stacked up items, and then I won't feel bad about the loss because I I have my character back, it doesn't have any fame, but fame isn't too big a deal, plus having dead fame means you can actually spend it, it's not just there as a visual number. There's of course another popular option for when you have extra character slots opened up, and that's to start a PPE, a pet player experience. This is where you start a fresh character with nothing, you don't use anything from your gift chest, you don't use anything from your regular chest, you don't use anything from trading. You just have your character and you see how far you can get with just items obtained on that character and obviously when creating a pet player experience you can have a lot of fun and you have nothing to lose if you die on it everything on the character was earned on the character so it's not a net loss you didn't lose anything from your vault from your ultimate storage and you can have a good time too a lot of people will do exclusively pbes on their account there's some variations on the pet play experience as well you can do it without a pet you can do it where you have to get all the tiered items in order. You can do it where you're only allowed untiered items or set tiered items. You could also maybe come up with some fun challenge ideas. Maybe you have a shell that chases you and you're not allowed to stop moving. Maybe you're only allowed to run each dungeon a single time, so you really have to get the most out of your dungeons. Though that one's a lot more luck, so maybe you wouldn't want to do something like that. There's always also the option of just looking at what you still have, appreciating what you haven't lost yet if you have a decent amount of bulk items. Obviously, if you did lose everything, I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you've lost absolutely everything, you might as well do a PPE. It's not like anything you do is going to be not a PPE since you have nothing. So if I had to summarize what you should do when you die in Realm of the Mad God, I'd definitely say you want to you wanna think about your death, why you died, how you died what you can do to avoid that sort of death in the future. Make a new character, whether it's a PPE or it's just a new version of the class that you want to max up. Then just farm some Lowlands dungeons. Do not take your max characters, your remaining max characters, if you have any, into high level dungeons because you're more likely to do something stupid. Everyone's done it at some point, I'm sure. Or maybe you start a new character and just immediately teleport to the Godlands and die. I know when I was new, I did that all the time, and it's kind of a waste of time. You might get a tier 6 item, but it's not really worth it in the end. Tier 6 is not all that much. And of course, the final the final thing you can do to cope with losing a character in Realm of the Mad God is to, to make a video talking about what you should do when you lose a character in Realm of the Mad God. That could help a little bit, I'd imagine. Maybe you lost a couple big characters in one week during Month of the Mad God to various things and you're kind of frustrated. You also lost an hour of video footage for the Huntress Challenge and you, you're kind of frustrated about that too. Maybe you just don't have much time to record a regular video during that week. So you think, oh, I'll just talk about dying in Realm of the Mad God. It could be fun. But I don't know anyone who would do that. Realm of the Mad God is not known for not being a permadeath game. In fact, it's actually known for being a permadeath game. And that's why when you die in the game, you're, you're dead. Your character's gone. And that, that's too bad, isn't it? I mean, dying is never fun. It happens to a lot of people in the game. Every day you see someone die, it'll be a dumb death. It'll be a smart death. 
hard, no way to tell really. 